Hello guys, this is Code and Code and this is 25th lecture of number theory series. In this lecture, we are going to study Miller-Rabin primality test, which is a better al uh, algorithm as compared to Fermat's primality test. We'll see why. So, of course, Miller-Rabin primality test is an algorithm to test whether a given number n is prime or not. Uh, since this is a prob uh, probabilistic algorithm so there is a probability a probability of error now the miller abin primality test works on the same is based on the same theorem on which fermat's uh, fermat's primality test was based and this is also based on fermat's little theorem which says that if p is a prime then for base a which is co-prime to p a raised to power p minus 1 should be congruent to 1 modulo p this we have already seen for Miller, uh, Miller Rabin primality test as well, resources would be cpalgorithms.com, the link of which I'll be providing in the description of the video and Wikipedia. Now, so what are the content of this lecture? First, we'll be learning how Miller Rabin actually works. Second, why Miller Rabin actually works. Basically, we'll be studying here the proof, the uh, proof of correctness of Miller Rabin test. We'll also see why Miller-Rabin is considered better as compared to Fermat's primality test. And this is one of the most important things. If you really want to understand this as deep as you can, then uh, make sure you watch till end. Watch it at 1.5x or 2x speed, doesn't matter. Just, just try to watch this till the end of this video. Now, before studying Miller-Rabin test, some of the building blocks which are necessary to understand Miller-Rabin test. One of the most important thing, uh, one of the basic thing is this, if for a given number n, n minus 1 can be written as 2 raised to the power s times d, where d is odd basically. Uh, you are factorizing the number n minus 1 in even and odd factors. So this is even factor, this is odd factor. So n minus 1 can be written as 2 raised to the power s, where s is certain some integer times d. d is also an integer which is odd so if i show you some examples so 7 can be written as 2 raised to the power 0 times 7 similarly 36 can be written as 2 raised to the power 2 times 9 so you can see the d is actually a uh, odd number so we have factorized the given number into odd times even uh, this can be odd as well if the power is 0 otherwise this is even times odd now now, since uh, Fermi's little theorem says that if n is a prime number, then uh, some integer, some base a, which is co-prime with n, raised to the power n minus 1 should be congruent to 1, right? Modulo n. And n minus 1, we, uh, we can write it as 2 raised to the power s times d, right? Now, a raised to the power n minus 1 is congruent to modulo, uh, congruent to 1 modulo n. So, we are replacing n minus 1 with 2 raised to the power s times d and the right hand side is shifted towards left so a raised to the power 2 raised to the power s times d minus 1 is congruent to 0 mod n now this can be written down as if i consider this whole thing a this whole thing b so this represents uh, using the identity a, uh, x square minus y square basically using this identity which is a square minus b square can be written down as a plus b times a minus b basically their square roots summation of their square root times a difference of their square root right so this is exactly what is we are doing here and you can just a second so here 2 raised power uh, a raised to power 2 raised to power s times d minus 1 can be written as uh, square root of both addition of uh, square root of both terms and subtraction of square root of both terms right so square root of a raised to the power 2 raised to the power s times d when you calculate square root of anything uh, square root is basically you basically divide the power of that number by 2 so square root of this thing would be uh, a raised to the power 2 raised to the power s times d divide by 2 when you divide 2 raised to the power s times d by 2 it would become 2 raised to the power s minus 1 times t and that is exactly what is happening here so basically we have written uh, we have applied this identity and factorized this uh, this term so we have factorized this into two terms now this again can be factorized further 
this again using the same identity can be uh, factorized further till you cannot divide the power basically till the point where you cannot calculate the square root you cannot calculate square root uh, at that point where you cannot divide the power of a right and you cannot divide the power of a as soon as you get to a raised to the power d basically where s minus i becomes 0 2 raised to the power s minus i becomes 0 which means 2 raised to the power 0 2 raised to the power 0 is 1 so a times 1 times uh, a raised to the power 1 times d which is basically a raised to the power d now you can now you cannot factorize this term because you cannot divide d by 2 because d is an odd number we already know that so we cannot calculate square root basically we would stop here each subsequent term is actually square root of previous so this is the square root of this similarly the next term would be square root of this and so on i'm only talking about the first so this is the square root of this similarly the next would have been square root of this and so on and finally you would stop here this was only the expansion of this expression till now we do not know anything about miller raven primality test it is same now miller uh, raven primality test is also based on fermi slater theorem so it says that if n is actually a prime number it must divide one of these factors right it either you should divide this or this or this or this or any factor it must divide one of these factors while initially what we were to do we were only to calculate a raised power n minus 1 modulo n it, if it was 1 then n was a probable prime if it was not equal to 1 then n was certainly a co uh, a, a composite number but here what we are doing we have transformed uh, transformed this expression into this and now miller raven test says that if n actually is a prime then it must divide at least one of these factors it is possible that uh, n is a composite number and that also divides one of these factor but not necessary for a composite number but if n is actually a prime number then it is a necessary condition for that number if n is a prime number then it is a necessary condition for that to divide at least one of these factors if n is not a prime number then it is not necessary it is possible that n is composite number and it still divides one of the factors but not necessary if n is prime then it is necessary condition so instead of only calculating a raised power n minus 1 we are going to calculate this we'll calculate a raised power d we would see whether a raised power d minus 1 is divisible by n or not and then a raised power d plus 1 is divisible by n or not and then square of a raised to power d plus 1 is divisible by n or not which is basically the next term and then next of that and next of that basically if there are x number of factor we would calculate each factor and see whether it is divisible by n or not if none of the factor is divisible by n then we can safely say that n is actually a composite number if at least one of the factor is divisible by n then n is a probable prime now we would prove why if n is a prime number it must divide one of these factor so if you see the article here the article that i'll be uh, i provided the link uh, for miller rabin test on cplgoldham.com it says that miller rabin is actually a stricter version of fermat's primality test the question is why this statement tells you that miller rabin test is actually better primality test algorithm as compared to fermat's primality test and the question is why why miller rabin test is considered better now see here uh, the reason is that it adds an extra layer of security why see uh, miller uh, fermat's primality test says that n should if n is a prime number then this identity should hold that is the only condition that we are checking now uh, if this condition can be uh, this condition can hold if n is odd as well as sorry if n is 
prime as well as when n is in certain condition when n is not a prime right but here in this we are checking one extra condition and that is if n really is prime then it must divide one of these factors it is possible then n is composite and still divides this which basically means that this condition holds for composite number as well as for a uh, prime number but this condition that it must divide at least one of the factor only is true for prime numbers so we are checking that condition as well so we are here checking two conditions and that is why miller rabin test is a bit better or strict uh, stricter version of fermat's primality test if you remember in fermat's primality test we have certain numbers which are called uh, i actually do not remember the names of those just just give me a second we have uh, kamikal numbers for fermat's primality test we have kamikal numbers which possess a special thread or basically uh, which are hard to uh, for which the probability of uh, this fermat's primality test is very very low but here in miller rabin test kamikal numbers do not exist because there there are no kamikal numbers for uh, miller rabin test there are no number which will possess the same thread as they possess for fermat uh, primality test now we have seen why miller rabin test is actually better as compared to fermat's uh, primality test now let's prove why if n is a prime number it must divide at least one of these factors so now let's prove the claim that we have that if n is actually a prime that it must divide one of these factors so there, there are many ways you can actually prove this this claim uh, one of the method is using a uh, contradiction you can prove this using contradiction as well but i'm going non-traditional way so suppose there is an integer n which is written down as product of k integers so a1 times a2 times a3 dash 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 ak now ask yourself a question can prime factorization of n prime factorization of this number can contain any prime which is not present in prime factorization of any of these number for example prime factorization of n contains 7 but none of these number have 7 in their prime factorization is it possible if you think just pause the video and think for some time and i'm going to tell you the answer anyways uh, most likely you already know the answer is the answer of this question is actually no prime factorization of n cannot contain any prime which is not present in prime factorization of these number because n is actually product of these numbers so if any prime exist in any of these integer must appear in prime factorization of n as well similarly if n we are our claim is that if n is a prime number then it must divide one of these factor why is that so see uh, if none of these contain uh, if none of the factors are divisible by n that means uh, in prime factorization of these n doesn't exist and that means that prime for example we are working for 7 or 9 or 13 let's take an example of 7 so none of the factor is divisible by 7 which means in their prime factorization 7 does not exist so uh, is it possible that their product which will be some number say n uh, it is already n so uh, so will their product say some number y so product of all of these is equals to y will their product be divisible by this the answer is no because the product of all these number will be equal to y and prime factorization of that number y will not contain this prime number 7 as well so that is why if none of these are divisible by this number if it is actually a prime if none of these factors are divisible by this prime then their product will not be divisible by this prime as well while this is not true for composite number for example let's see see 2 is not divisible by 6 3 is not divisible by 6 but their product 2 times 3 is actually divisible by 6 that would not happen for any prime number for example 2 is not divisible by 7 3 is not divisible by 7 their product will also 
not be divisible by 7 if n is actually a prime number and none of these factor are divisible by this then their product will also not be divisible by n and that proves our claim so basically if n is a prime number one of these factor must be divisible by n and that is what we uh, check in miller abin primality test and that is why this is a stricter version of uh, primality test for format primality test if i show you the uh, implementation this is let me increase the font size most of the part is same as format's primality test which we have already seen in the previous lecture of number theory so what we do first of all uh, i'm not showing these things first of all you make sure of the base case and then you will calculate s and d right which basically are these just a second which are this s and d so basically you are calculating s and d for n minus one right after calculating that what you are doing you are running the test for i i t r i t e r number of times right the same thing that you do in fermat's primality test each time what you do you calculate a random number in the range 2 to p minus 2 right after that you check whether it is prime or not here you would see whether it is composite or not if it is a composite number that means if if n doesn't divide any of these factor then it is a composite number for sure right if it is a composite number straight away we would return false otherwise after running all of these iteration uh it is we have found that it is not a composite number then there are strong probability there is strong probability that n is actually a prime number and finally we will return true now the thing about check composite number is this check composite number takes argument n a d n s of course you would need those you need n because you are calculating modular n you need s n d we have s d of course the base and n we would calculate a raised to power d right because of this so a, uh, these factor must be one of these factor must be divisible by n how would check that first of all you would calculate a raised to power d and see whether a raised to power d minus 1 modular n is 0 or not so here it is checked uh, it is tested we have calculated bin power is basically uh, binary exponentiation which can calculate a raised to power d in log d time so we have calculated a raised to power d modular n which is x it is either 1 or n minus 1 basically it is equal to 1 which means this is divisible by n so if you are calculating a raised to power d it, it comes out to be equal to 1 that means this is divisible by n because a raised to power d modular n is equals to 1 1 minus 1 would be 0 either that or n minus 1 if a raised to power d modular n is n minus 1 n minus 1 plus 1 would be n or n n n modular n would be 0 so we are checking these two condition in this statement if a raised to power d modular n is equals to 1 or n minus 1 then it divides one of these two and that means it is not a composite number and that is why we are returning false and then from 1 to less than s basically we are going till s minus 1 next and next and next term and uh, if you already have this how you are going to calculate this simply square of the previous term and that is what we are doing here we are calculating x is equals to a square of current x so x is equals to x times x modular n and then we are checking whether it is divisible by n or not and if it is divisible by n we will return basically false which would represent that yes this term or that term or that term is divisible by n if after in all of this none of the factors are divisible by n if none of the factors are divisible by n we would reach here which means we would return true and if none of the factors are divisible by n that represents n is actually a composite number because if n was a prime number it would have divided at least one of the factors and that is why at last we are returning true bin power you don't need to study uh, because you might already know this is a binary exponentiation to calculate a raised power d modulo n so this is how uh, 
Miller Rabin primality test works. So uh, for 100% accuracy, what you could go with is deterministic version of Miller Rabin test. So if you want to learn the Miller Rabin test with 100% accuracy, we are working with 32 or 64 bit integer, basically an integer n which is less than equals to, uh, which uses uh, which is less than equals to the range of 64 bit integer, basically 2 is for uh, 63. If an integer is 32 or 64 bit integer, what you can do instead of randomly choosing your base, what you can do if you are working with 32 bit integer, testing with these four prime numbers 2, 3, 5, and 7. Instead of choosing the random base, you can test only with these four bases 2, 3, 5, and 7 for 32 bit integer. This would uh, if Miller Rabin test tells that n is a prime number using all of these by testing with these prime number, if n comes out to be prime number, then its accuracy is 100%. Why? Because uh, one more thing, then I'll tell you why. Uh, if you are working with 64 bit integer, then testing running Miller Rabin test on first 12 prime numbers is enough. So here you can see here is the modified version. Instead of checking, instead of uh, calculating a randomly choosing a randomly we are testing with the first 12 prime numbers 2 3 5 7 11 and so on so first 12 prime numbers we are testing with if uh, testing with these 12 prime numbers would 100% uh, would guarantee you 100% that the given number is prime or not if you are working with 64 bit or less uh, or 32 bit integer why is that so uh, there's not any theoretical proof of this but a practical proof of this as the as the uh, article itself says that people have invested a lot of computation power in finding the lower bounds of it so people have tested a miller rabin test miller rabin primality test with these number for 32 bit integers testing with these four numbers you can replace these with only i mean you can delete all of these the remaining you can run miller rabin test only on these four prime numbers mm -hmm. and people have tested that miller rabin test does not fail for 32 bit integer if you use these four prime numbers and uh, first four prime numbers basically and for 64 bit integer you can use the first 12 prime numbers and miller rabin test will not fail so uh, people have tested this practically not theoretically there is no theoretical proof of it but practical proof of it so of course you can go with this if you are testing a primality test of an integer which is 32 or 64 bit uh, 64 bit you can of course go with these uh, the first 12 prime number and run miller rabin test on it and it would with 100 percent accuracy tell whether the given number n is prime or not so before we leave before we leave let's visit an academy so an academy has launched a competitive programming course where you get these perks first you get to learn from the experts experts are like the guys who are iui uh, medalists and icpc finalists and the guys who are who have worked with companies like google and microsoft and companies companies like that all of the courses are well structured and you get to get live sessions where you can interact with the TAs and if you have any doubt you can ask them and there and there make sure that your doubt is clear and of course uh, there are many you can get the subscription and the subscriptions are of one month six month and 12 month and as you can see if you use my code you get 10 percent off on six or 12 month course or subscription but for one month when you need to try initially it is like uh, 6000 but when you apply the code uh, you get to get the one month subscription only for 999 so if you want to check out whether uh, the subscription of this competitive programming course provided by an academy is worth investing your money or not of course you can always go for the one month subscription so mm -hmm. if you really want to invest your money for competitive programming and you want to learn from experts and you have and you can offer you can go with you can go with first one month subscription and if you like the, the way they are teaching and you are able to understand things of course you can go for the for the uh, 
six or twelve month subscription so this was all for this lecture thank you guys for watching and until the next video drops keep coding thank you